So in the second part of the interview, we're going to discuss with Dr. Calvo Baltanas the future of food tech in Singapore. Vanessa is going to work at a vertical farming project at CREATE, the International Research Center in Singapore. So Vanessa, what are the main needs of Singapore in terms of food self-sufficiency? All, all of this. <laughs> we, we need a lot of food that we are not producing ourselves. So Singapore has to import basically everything. Mm -hmm. uh, there is very little uh, when it comes down to agriculture. There is some egg production in the north of Singapore, which is basically in partnership with Malaysia. And we need to import everything when it comes down to vegetables, animal products, and so on. So that's a huge risk because uh, we have seen that supply chains can be disrupted anytime. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if that happens, we, we do not have enough uh, food to, to, to keep people going here in Singapore and we don't have enough production. So Singapore is coming up with ways of efficiently grow food in Singapore. But of course, this is a city state, there is not enough land. Uh, everything is built up. So we need to find a system that allows us to grow food in very little space and in control conditions, because of course it's also a tropical country. So there are <clears throat> lots of foods that can be grown, but some others not. Mm -hmm. So we need to control the environment in which the food is produced, and that can only be done indoors. So vertical farming is one of the most natural solutions that Singapore has found in order to uh, guarantee food production in the city. Exactly, and also tackle space constraints as, as well, because it's, <coughs> it's everything is imported. And we, I mean, Singapore is a small country, mm -hmm. so they need this vertical farming to exactly. provide all the food that they may need. Exactly. So what is the future of vertical farming in Singapore and what are the tangible benefits? Right. So vertical farming has gained a lot of attention in the, in the last years, but we have to say, if we are very honest, and we should because we are scientists, that it, have, it has been proven efficient sometimes and inefficient other times. So it depends on the crop that you're growing. Mm -hmm. um, some crops are very uh, prone to, well, to, to grow properly in vertical farming settings, some others are not. Mm -hmm. It could be because of a space constraint, as you say, like for instance, maize is a huge plant, it's very complicated to grow indoors, uh, and it's a very particular climate conditions that might not be the ones in Singapore. So there are other foods that we are investigating at the moment that can be grown properly. So we have uh, like the leafy greens, as they are called, which is all the cold related products, uh, well, like bok choy, bok choy and all this, mm -hmm. uh, which is a staple food in Asia. So that is, that is a great opportunity. Now we are exploring other crops that are also staple food uh, in Asia, such as soybean. So my project would be working uh, on soybean, trying to find the best conditions for it to grow properly and to maximize protein production. Um, and yeah, it, the benefits of course are that you can control the conditions around you, but there is a huge input of um, energy that you need in order to control the conditions. You need aircon, because you know, temperature here is like 36 degrees, mm -hmm. and not that there are many crops that can grow at 36 degrees without burning up. <laughs> uh, you need to control humidity, you need to control pests, nutrition, that, uh, the nutrients that are available for the plants and so on. So we are now trying to evaluate whether it is sustainable to grow crops this way uh, in urban settings. And yeah, depending on the setting itself and the crop, it might make sense or it might not make sense mm -hmm. at all. So uh, yeah, we are in the very early stages. Uh, it might be a solution for many cities or it might not be for others. So it, it really has to be evaluated in a case by case scenario. And I think you have discussed also some challenges like the type of crops mm -hmm. and also the conditions. Are there any more challenges regarding vertical farming? Mm. So in terms of expertise as well, of course, because this is such a new topic, there is no enough um, programs that are developed in order to adjust to the needs that are you know, coming up from mm -hmm. this particular field. Like there are, for instance, Singapore doesn't even have a, a program in plant sciences and agriculture because traditionally this country has, didn't have to care for it. So traditionally not enough people is an ex are experts on this topic and that, that applies a bit worldwide. Mm -hmm. So expertise is, lack of expertise in this case is, is a problem. 
um, that we need to to just tackle by by doing. I mean, we need to to increase our resources to put more uh, people working on this and, and gain the expertise uh, regarding how to grow this crop or the other crop in this city or the other city with mm -hmm. this type of farm and this other type of farm. So yeah, that would be one one way to to go. And at, at the time, I think is the only way to go. Yes. So you have talked, Vanessa, about resources. Mm. So are there important investments coming from the government, public mm. institutions or private ones? Yes, so there there is a lot of international collaboration and a lot of money that uh, Singapore is putting into this type of projects. Uh, quite substantial, considering that we don't know how things are going to turn out. But yeah, they, they seem to be convinced that this may be the only way to go for Singapore. So the, the government definitely is investing a lot. Mm -hmm. And they are promoting huge international networks to be established in Singapore with main institutions worldwide. Like for instance, my project would be working with NASA and other institutions which are like really top on, on what they are doing. And they, they really give us the resources as researchers to do that. We have money to travel, we have money for stays abroad, we have money to buy the best devices that we can buy, to hire the best expertise that we can hire. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, for sure. And at the same time, there are other farms, private investments that had been settled in Singapore, and they are starting to develop their own crops for this particular urban environment. And they also have an interest, of course, on the research we do, so we can collaborate. In very few words, the way it usually goes is we do the basic research mm -hmm. to identify the best varieties for the best conditions, and then we scale up this to an industrial level. And they provide that platform, the industrial platform, and we provide all the hard work that comes before that they couldn't do because they don't have the research facilities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sure, there is a, a, a bold way interest on, on developing these projects forward and private money, public, public yes, money. Yes, and that's really useful for researchers. Yeah, and definitely. But so you have mentioned about looking overseas for technology and talent. Mm. Do you think that Spanish startups and companies have opportunities in this field in food tech in Singapore? Yeah, in this case, I would say Spanish researchers or not even only researchers people that have traditionally worked on on, on agriculture mm -hmm. in farms themselves they have a lot of a lot of things to offer because they do have the expertise of how to grow real crops massively to an in, like what, what would be realistic from an industrial point of view so for instance the person that will be working with me um, as a as a research assistant and so on he he hasn't done research before as such. He has traditionally been working on a company, but his expertise is super valuable because he does understand the limitations and opportunities within the company. So it, 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 this, this is necessary. We need this kind of knowledge, which I don't have, for instance, because I've always been doing research within public institutions and we don't have the means to go that big. So for sure, Spain is traditionally an agriculture country and we do have a lot of expertise. We grow many different crops, many different varieties. We have lots of knowledge. So as a plant scientist that come from this particular background, I would say now would be a great time to, you know, jump in the train and, yeah. and try to, to ride the wave of, of these kind of investments in Singapore. Not only in Singapore, also in Asia in the States. Mm -hmm. The States at the moment is, is like doing amazing. Like Detroit, for instance, is a city that has come up on top of, of um, urban farms because, yeah, they didn't really have enough uh, to, to get by. So mm -hmm. they developed these systems and they, they are very good at what they are doing. And same in China, Dubai as well is doing very well when it comes down to this. So, yeah, so there are opportunities. There are. So for anyone interested, they can look into Singapore or worldwide? Yeah, for sure. Uh, not not, um, not Southern European countries because mm -hmm. there is no need. There is no need for us to establish urban farms as it is now. It will take much more energy for us to keep us to keep the urban farms going mm -hmm. than what we get out what we get out of production because we do have the land and so does France or Italy or Germany or even I mean this is not Southern Europe anymore but Poland. 
Ukraine traditionally as well, although mm -hmm. now the situation is not the best, of course. But uh, yeah, we again we have to evaluate case by case whether it makes sense to go into a startup. I don't know, maybe in Madrid mm -hmm. to work on vertical farm. Maybe not. Maybe that startup will tank because. Mm -hmm. The, the production and energy is too expensive at the moment, so production is not going to keep up with the cost of, of keeping the farm. But in the States, for sure, many opportunities in Asia, I would say, go for it. Yes. Okay. So look for a good opportunity and just jump for it. Yes. So thank you so much, Vanessa, for giving us an overview of the future of food tech. And congratulations on your no, new you. position and good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you so Hope much. Hope to see you soon in the Spanish link. Likewise. I'll see you next week with more content.